Good morning, friends. It's an early cold morning and fueled by caffeine and cannabis, my creativity sent me straight into the art journal where I found this page that already had this background pretty much completed with pattern and texture and layers of paint. I just had to build upon it. So this stack of die cut flowers was sitting at the back of a craft drunk drawer and I decided to pull them out and use them as many as I could on this junk journal page. So I clustered them in the top and bottom corner to kind of make a frame and draw your eye in. And I'm gonna use a hot glue gun to attach all of these pieces because I find that it works really fast and works very well, especially on top of layers of paint and all of this texture. And these die cut flowers were a little bit heavier, thicker paper, like chipboard. So the hot glue gun ensures that they are secure to the page. I also used the negative space, the cutout, um, as little frames. So not only did I use the die cut flowers themselves, but I also used the like excess, the waste part that necessarily would have been thrown away. I did go over everything with a layer of Mod Podge just to seal it in and it helps drawing on top of things um, if it's all like sealed in and uniform. <laughs> and I feel like the Mod Podge makes a uniform surface without losing the texture and everything that you built up with your paint. Next, I wanted to add these stickers from In Love Arts shop. I will try and have as much as uh, possible linked either on Amazon, which is where I buy a lot of the stationary supplies like Mod Podge and black pens and white gel pens and paint markers. But I also like this stationary shop, In Love Arts, just because of their sticker selection. And these vellum stickers are so cool, especially on art journal pages, because they still kind of let the background peek through and the other elements on your page are still visible, but they add image and interest. So I used a few of the gold foil doilies and some of the florals and just kind of clustered them around the die cut flowers and around the flower frames. Now that I have the like elements, the kind of mixed media, I started with paint and texture, then I added stuff on top of that, added some more uh, stationery on top of it. Uh, now I can kind of go in with more paint and media um, on top of on top of those layers. Before I move on, I figured since I have the stickers out and I thought these doilies and circles would also kind of go with the circles on this page, I, I just flipped to another page. Maybe this is why our journal pages never get completed <laughs> or they just get started. Um, I just work on them in increments and while one page is drying or while the inspiration has dried up on one page, I'll go and move on to another one. Um, so I'm, I'm adding these doily circles kind of around these circles that were already on the page. Um, it already had some layers and background and interest. Now I feel like it just needs some words and some contrast and another page is closer to being done. So I figured I might as well go back to this, this page since this is what we're working on today <laughs> and the inspiration was still here. Um, I find with creativity and arts and crafts, when the creativity strikes, roll with it. Um, it'll always be different. It may never be perfect. Um, so to just kind of see where creativity takes you. Um, and today it was in my art journal. So I went around with a dark black pen around the cluster, the flower clusters in the corner um, to kind of, like I said, make a frame and make a little bit of contrast. Having 
dark black lines or shading or highlights with white lines um, makes everything pop. And this page is so busy. There's so much texture going on in the background. Um, I really needed some high contrast to separate the background, the very busy background from maybe a more focal point. Focal points are kind of the hardest for journal, art journal pages like this for me. Um, but I find that doing high contrast, like thick black lines or black and white stripes, um, shading, highlights, stuff that adds contrast uh, is the easiest way to kind of make more of a focal point. Backgrounds are easy because you're just adding textures and layers and building upon that um, and then your focal point really needs to stand out so having high contrast helps. If that made sense. <laughs> I'm adding more of the black line and you can see how that makes it pop and there's more contrast and now they stick out um, when before they just kind of jumbled into the background. Uh, these white polka dots just with the paint marker uh, make it look I think more whimsical and more more artsy so I love adding white highlights either with the white paint markers sometimes they can be a little bit messy so if you're looking for a little bit more like detail um, you can go in with a white gel pen it's kind of a an endless struggle to to find the right mediums for the for the right project um, even here I didn't have the right black pen <laughs> and it worked perfectly on the background pages it made those thick dark black flowers but added on top of the white kind of glossy frame it didn't work as well so I kept messing up the lettering eventually I had to go in with just a sharpie um, and not like a new sharpie, an old <laughs> soft tip sharpie <laughs> that didn't write very well, but it had really dark pigment and um, it's permanent. So I instead just, I went with it. <laughs> That's what you do. And I figured I can go in with a whiteout or in this case, the white gel pen to kind of fix up my lettering where it didn't turn out the best. And maybe it was because I hadn't practiced hand lettering in a long time. Hand lettering and drawing is definitely a skill and a practice. And the more you do it, the better you are at it. And I hadn't lettered or drawn in a while. So you can, you can kind of tell that in these janky flowers. Um, luckily, it's an art journal page and janky, whimsical, artsy flowers <laughs> are perfect. But my lettering and some of the line work, you know, could be, could be worked on. I tried to do three different flowers, kind of, you know, the same feel. But on the first one, I had the veins from the flower coming from the center. On this second flower, I did veins and lines all the way through the flower. And on this last blossom flower, I did concentric petals. You can see here, this is the black Sharpie. It doesn't make the cleanest of lines, um, but it, it works. And I can always go back in with white gel pen and really kind of clean up these letters. I decided to have it say sew, blossom, and grow just because that's kind of the, I don't know, I was feeling the garden vibes and a lot of my creativity has gone into my garden this season. With the COVID pandemic, I really found a lot of creativity and comfort in my garden so I haven't been doing as much art journaling which is why I was a little bit rusty and hadn't practiced my hand lettering or drawing really um but this is kind of the way of still having the garden and still being out in the garden and to remind myself that it's a season it's like a process you have to sow the seed for it to blossom 
and it has to blossom for it to grow and it just keeps going um I'm kind of in the process of working on my fall garden putting in the new crops I live in California so um it doesn't really get super cold here um no real winter so I'm excited for the fall garden and that was kind of my inspiration for this page a little bit of florals a little bit of gold and pink and black and white um just kind of my creative brain on a page of how it looked and how it felt that day. Um, tomorrow it'll be different. Um, each art journal page and every artist is different. Um, and I think it's, uh, would be a good addition if I dated this. Um, but that's pretty much how this art journal page is gonna turn out. I don't add much journaling. Um, to my pages just because I do kind of a word vomit in my diary um, if I need to journal anything out. Uh, this is more of just a creative painting space um, and I like how it turned out. It's a very busy page but it's an art journal and it's completed so kind of the the last little step to seal in all of this hard work and all of this paint and all of this design is to go in with a little bit of clear spray paint or you could do Mod Podge, um, just something to seal in the design so that I can look back at this in the future and see how my art style was and how it progresses. So uh, thank you guys for hanging out and watching this little video with me today until I see you guys in the next video stay creative